I've already called you Catelyn. Yes, that's correct. That is correct. Yes. You need to establish because some people might think you're called Caitlin. Yes. Well, and quite rightly, and so they should. And you changed your name from Catherine. Yeah. Yeah, it's on my passport and everything. I'm literally Catelyn now. Okay. Five. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Catelyn Moran. Yes. Why did you change your name from Catherine? I uh, was going through a phase of reading every single book in the library and I'd read all the ones that had sex in and all the ones that were funny and then I got around to the freaky ones and one of the freaky books was about numerology uh, which is where each of the letters in your name has a number and you add it all up and it tells you what your destiny is and the destiny of being Catherine with a C Moran uh, was quite poor uh, whereas once I worked out what the destiny of someone with the name Catherine Moran was it was great. Did growing up in a three bedroom house as one of eight siblings yes. in the end what sort of impact has that had on your life, if any? Um, it's made me buy a lot of towels and tights. The two things that were in the shortest supply within our house were towels and tights. Uh, there were five girls in the house and only three pairs of black uh, 100 denier tights between them. So uh, often it was like um, those, uh, was it, the, is it in uh, Clash of the Titans or something, where there's the three gorgons but they've only got one eye between them? It was like that but with tights. Sort of two of us could go out and one of us would have to stay in because we, only had, uh, we didn't have enough tights. And towels. Um, all the towels would smell, would always be perpetually damp and would smell of whoever had used them last. So I now obsessively buy towels. Now, when you were 11, yes. you were homeschooled, yes. am I right? What Which consists of, of absolutely nothing. Um, theoretically, we should have had lessons, but what you can actually get away with is simply watching classic MGM musicals over and over again whilst eating lumps of cheese on a stick, uh, the invention of the cheese lollipop, um, as we phrased it. You didn't go to university. No. Has that had an effect on your life, do you think, in a good way or in a bad way or both? Yes, I'm terrible at spelling, um, and kind of I, I don't know really massive basic facts. Um, I didn't know the cervix was a hole um, until I got pregnant and explained how I would give birth. Um, I'm sort of sketchy as to left and right, to be honest. I don't really know where a lot of countries are. Um, but it did give me a three-year jump on everybody else. While everybody else was having a fine old time at the taxpayer's expense, um, I was just out there grafting. <laughs> you were writing articles from a very young age at a national level, and you were presenting TV. Yes. I mean, we're talking sort of 17, 18, 19. When you look back at that time... What was motivating you? What do you think has driven you? Was it success, fame, excitement, fulfilment, what? Well, I mean, as you've mentioned before, we were brought up in a three-bedroom house and there were eight of us, so it was simply needing some space. Um, I needed to earn some... I'd been told by, uh, by all my siblings that I could never move back into the house in Wolverhampton because they'd already taken my room and put all their things in there. So going back was not an option. I could only move forward. Um, and so when television presented itself, it was, it was another reason to pay the rent and not go back to Wolverhampton. When did you decide that you were a feminist? Was there a moment of decision? Yeah, I think probably when my brother Eddie was born. Uh, there were three girls and then Eddie was born, who was a boy. And, uh, and Dad just kept saying, oh, he's the best. He's the apple of my eye, Prince Rupert. And, uh, and I felt deep down inside that that was a very wrong thing, to, thing to, for him to be saying in front of three girls. And, uh, and so I used everything that I could in order to prove that Eddie was just equal to us and should empty the bins like we were. Um, and, uh, and once I found that feminism was the word that I could employ uh, to explain why he would have to do the same jobs as us, I felt like I had found my calling. And how old were you at that moment? <laughs> Oh God, Eddie was 92, so, oh God, uh, oh, that's seven, eight. And what, for you, does feminism mean today? We don't have much time for this, but... Yes. Well, roughly. very simply, very simply, all that feminism is, is women being equal to men. So everything else that everybody's loaded onto it, that's just the stuff that the people who are into it then have added to it as sort of bolt-on extras. But you don't have to have any of that. It's simply women being equal to men. But you have felt that you've got something to contribute to that debate, haven't you? Yes. So, I mean, what, in a nutshell, has that been, do you think? That you, how have you taken the debate forward? Uh, well, what, understandably, uh, the previous generations of feminists... If you can call debate, sorry to Yes, start. well, I mean, mine are always monologues. There's never any debate. Um, but what previous generations of feminists had, uh, had done, very understandably, is be very angry. Um, and understandably because they were being treated like animals and having to explain that they had brains the same size as men. Um, so they were very angry and that's what I think put off this generation because they just saw anger and fury which well, you know younger women don't feel sort of angry now we're living on the the shoulders of the success of the previous feminists so the thing that i wanted to bring was just being able to muck about with the idea of being a woman more it's frequently hilarious to be a woman and i could see a lot of comic potential in writing about how ridiculous it is to be a woman now. Do you think boys and girls should be brought up the same? 
Oh, gosh. Um, yes, I guess. You can have more time to think about that. Maybe it's a, a difficult question to well, throw at you. Well, literally, the only difference that I could think that you might have between having young boys and young girls is that boys might want one of those beds that's shaped like a racing car, whereas girls probably wouldn't. I mean, that probably portrays that I've only got girls, but, but the that's the only and, difference I could think of. The pink of. and blue <laughs> thing, do you think that, you know, those sort of stereotypes, do you think they should be sort of got rid of? I think it's good to keep them, because my husband, when he was rebelling against his parents at the age of 14, painted his bedroom pink um, in order to wind up his parents. So I think for that reason, keep it. As a communicator and a sharer, is it immensely frustrating writing behind a paywall? Uh, no, because it paid for this kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but come on, in some sense, is it? Well, I've got a best of uh, book coming out in September, so everyone will be able to read it then. But I'm on Twitter all day. <gasps> You're on Twitter all the time. Well, I'm on Twitter all day, so I can communicate as much as I want. Um, and, you know, in the olden days, when you were a journalist, people would, only people who bought the paper would read what you'd written. It's only recently that we've thought, yes, another 20 billion people can read it for free, but, of course, it's no, of no use to you to have 20 billion people reading your stuff if you're not getting paid for it, which is what's happening on most of those papers. You spend a lot of time on Twitter. Do yes. you feel that you inhabit two worlds, online and off? all at the same time. Is there a difference between the two? I mean, the, all of the friends that I've made in the last couple of years are uh, friends from Twitter. And because I work from home, and there's, as you can see, not really anyone in here, that's like a little online office for me. I've got a little community, finally, that I can hang out with. I want another 10 minutes with you, but I can't. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you.